Hello everyone and welcome to my explanation of how the RSA algorithm works. In this video uh, I'm going to explain to you the intuition behind the RSA algorithm. Uh, I'm not going to be explaining some historical information such as who the inventors are although RSA stands for the you know initials of the three people who invented it but I won't be covering that you can find that somewhere else online but I'll be, I'll be covering the intuition behind the RSA algorithm I'm going to be showing you why it's so special and why it's publicly and widely used I'm sorry for uh, trans uh, for uh, for you know exchanging secret information uh, encrypted information and then give you some example now before I delve into the details of how the RSA algorithm works I'd like you to to be familiar with the following I'd like you to be familiar with prime numbers with number factorization and with prime or with uh, number factorization to its prime fact factors especially the uh, fundamental uh, theory of arithmetic I'd like you to be, to be familiar with Fermat's little theorem with Euler's phi function with Euler's torsion theorem and especially using the phi function for, a fri for, for example for a prime number p the phi of p equals p minus 1 and for two prime numbers p and q the phi of p times q is p minus 1 times q minus 1 that dot there it just means time so we can use a star for example uh, it's not the dot product now I do have my own videos on these on prime numbers or number f or number factorization Fermat's theorem, Euler's phi and torsion theorems please uh, uh, look these up in my YouTube channel now the intuition behind the RSA algorithm is as follows let's imagine that I would like to receive encrypted messages from everyone I'd like to receive secret information from other people so what I can do is I have I need to have two things I'm gonna call them a key and a decoder so I will be calling the first one is a key and I'm gonna be calling the second one a decoder now what I can do is I can publish my key make it public to everyone make it known to everyone and keep my decoder secret yes so if people want to send me something what they can do is they can use my key the one I made, I made public they can use it to encrypt their message and then send it to me when I receive that message I can decrypt it using the decoder so again I need to have two things a key and a decoder I publish my key so people can use that key to encode something to encrypt something and then when they send it to me of course I need to keep the decoder secret when they send it to me I use the decoder the one that I kept secret to decrypt the message and retrieve the original message or the original information now the key is usually known as the public key and the decoder is known as the private key so this is public key uh, cryptography sort of this is how the uh, RSA algorithm works or this is how the idea of public key and private key uh, works now for ex let's, let me give you an example from our day-to-day -day life if you use online banking then you must have seen the little lock uh, symbol on your on, on the uh, address bar of your browser well that is using encryption that's using sort of uh, uh, ciphering information to send it to your bank and then at the other end there at the bag the bank's end the information will be deciphered to get the original information or for example if you buy a book from eBay from Amazon uh, from uh, several online uh, 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 places then what happens is when you for example buy something from eBay they send their public key to your browser and then when you fill your information your browser encrypts your information using that public key and send it back to them send it to eBay now at the end of at eBay's end there at eBay they use their private key ie their decoder now to decrypt the data and retrieve the original information for example your bank details your card number and things like that I hope that makes sense the idea is actually quite simple now moving on to how the RSA actually works how the RSA algorithm actually works let's imagine we generate two large random prime numbers so we have some conditions here that we need two large 
and random prime number so we generate two, ram two numbers randomly they need to be large very very large yes extremely large I mean the number of digits can be tens or hundreds if possible yes I'm not talking about million or a billion or a trillion no something that we can't even name or count yes two large random prime numbers they need to be prime let's call them P and Q what we do is we multiply P by Q and we name that value n and then what we do is we compute the phi of n using Euler's phi function phi of n because P and Q are prime then the phi of n which is P times Q n is P times Q so the phi of P times Q is P minus 1 times Q minus 1 yes this is what I explained in the prerequisites in the first slide now after that we choose an integer e such that st here stands for such that e needs to be larger than 1 and less than phi so the value of e it needs to be larger than 1 less than phi any integer now it doesn't matter whether it's, it's it's prime or composite and the gcd of e and phi equals 1 what that means is e and phi need to be co-prime or relatively prime so the GCD of E and phi equals 1 after that we compute what we call the secret exponent or D now D again needs to be larger than 1 less than phi such that E times D the value of T times D is congruent to 1 modulo 5 if you remember the congruence I actually have a video on congruence by the way you can look it up in my YouTube channel so that E times D is congruent with 1 modulo phi now up until here that is it basically if you remember from this slide the public key and the private key if we go back here the public key now is the combination of N and Q and E I'm sorry and the private key is a combination of D P and Q so the, pr the, pr the public key is N and E whereas the private key is is D P and Q now we make that public key public of course and the, the values of D P Q and Phi need to be kept secret so we keep these values secret and we make that combination sort of public for people for people to use to encrypt their message and, th and encrypt their information and send it to us so n the value of p times q is usually known or referred to as the modulus e is known as the public exponent and or just the exponent and d is referred to as the secret exponent so this is how it actually works it relies on these run large random prime numbers and it relies on uh, Euler's rule and on congruence as I've explained in my videos in my YouTube channel now why is RSA so special what is special about the RSA algorithm the idea here is, here is as follows given two large prime numbers P and Q a composite number remember the difference between a prime number and, and a composite number so a composite number can be computed as n equals time I'm sorry n equals P times Q so we have two large I, I insist on large large prime numbers P and Q then we can, can just say n equals P and Q now from prime number factorization if P and Q are very very large that means n will be even larger yes now given n it's near impossible to find P and Q it's near impossible to factorize n to its prime factors p and q in real time this is why the RSA algorithm is so special and is so strong that given just n there's no known algorithm there's no known algorithm to efficiently find p and q i.e. the prime factors of n so again given just n which is extremely large now it's near impossible to find the values of p and q i.e. the prime numbers of p and q it's almost impossible to factorize n to its prime factors p and q i'm gonna stop here thank you very much for watching in the next video uh, i think this is taking too long this is why uh, i'm going to split it over two videos or maybe three i'm probably planning to show you some java code but i'm gonna stop here in the next video 
I'll be giving giving you a sort of a scenario where two entities or two sides exchange information. So let's say, for example, X, Y, X and Y, they want to exchange secret information, or A and B, and then we'll see how that works, and then we'll take uh, uh, an example to show you how everything actually works. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.